All right, a couple of NFL quick hitters as we get ready for week number two. This one comes under the headline of uh, who cares? Odell Beckham Jr. <laughs> I mean, we have it because, you know, people like to react to Odell, obviously. But Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, had something to say. You guys have it there? Yep. All right. Odell Beckham uh, says what exactly? And that is that Saquon Barkley is the best I've ever seen. Okay, good. Like, put him on your fantasy team. Like, the, what am I yeah, supposed to do with that? Is that a shot at Eli? No. That is no. <laughs> what, what I don't get, this is the internet trend, though. At the end, he wrote down, don't right. at me, because he doesn't want to have the conversation. Yes, it's like but the he old. Wants, yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. It, that's why uh, we all live by the rule of post and ghost. Don't deal with what all the haters have to say. <laughs> Listen, Saquon had a ridiculously great you know, first game. That's why they made him the you who player of the week, <laughs> right? Um, and it's great. Like Odell, this it, this is what it's sad actually that Odell Beckham. You know, he's like dying for attention. I get it. You want to play football? You have the torn ACL. Somebody put stuff out there. It's, I guess it's our fault, right? We don't have to acknowledge it. We don't have to put it on a crumpled up piece of paper and force me to talk about it. But we did. <laughs> so I did. The same thing we have with the Cowboys segment coming up again. Like, it's on the piece of paper. I got to do it. Let's go, let's go to uh, number two on this uh, little quick hit NFL segment. Lamar Jackson now says that uh, they've got some answers for the Dolphins' blitz, which is going to be a lot different for him than the Jets. Although, to the Jets' credit, while they didn't get to him a lot from a sack standpoint, they did a really good job controlling the Ravens' running attack. I think it's the lowest amount of running yards the Ravens have had in a very, very long time. It was under 70 yards. But uh, walk me through uh, what the Dolphins do that made Lamar have to discuss their ability to get to him. The funny thing is uh, Lamar coming out and saying that we're prepared and ready for it, I think everyone's prepared for zero. Like, you weren't prepared last time, which is shocking right. that you would come out and admit that. But then cover zero is pretty easy to beat as long as you know you're going to get hit. Like you just tell you one one right receiver, you know who's going to be open, you ding it to him, and you carry on. So it's, it's not complicated, right? It's not overly complicated. Got so. it. So the fact that they weren't ready for it's more alarming, too, than the fact that they're now are ready for it, yeah. right? A little concerning, because like, that, uh, I think that's offense 101. They, hey, when they go cover zero, what do we have to do? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, when you look at that game, like my expectation is that you know Baltimore wins the game. That's not you know earth-shattering. But you start wondering... Like, at what point this year, let's say Miami wins this game. Mm -hmm. All right, they might. Let's say they're now 2-0, and all right? Mike McDaniel's off to a great start as a head coach. At what point do you think people start taking the Dolphins seriously? Like, beating New England with a bad Mac Jones and a screwed-up, you know, offensive game plan and who's the coordinator and all that nonsense with New England. All right, great, you should win that game, right? Mm -hmm. And historically, you own New England even when Brady was there. What do you think Miami has to do to be taken seriously? I think a win against the Ravens right now. I you think, think it would, does? I, I think that would start it. That would start the conversation. It wouldn't put it definitely like, oh, you know, that's a team to beat. But it definitely starts that conversation engine to say, hey, maybe we should be looking at the Dolphins. All right, let me go to number three, Allen Robinson. They gave Allen Robinson a three-year, $46.5 million deal, $30 million, just over that, is guaranteed. And then they threw him the ball once in their season opening game and loss to the Buffalo Bills. So, Allen Robinson, of course, now has to get more involved. You can't only look at Cooper Cup, but how do you get him more involved? You gave him 30 mil guaranteed. You better throw him the football. I guess the question on the screen is the right question, though. It's only one game, so we always overreact. But, you know, Cooper Cup's going to do what he does. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. He's amazing. But, you know, you thought you fortified your wideouts by bringing Allen Robinson in. You gave him all that money. No guarantee that OBJ comes back to the Rams or comes back to play at all. And I'm trying to figure out, is this a case of Super Bowl hangover? Is it a case of maybe there's something is wrong with Stafford's elbow? Or is it, hey, it's one game, slow your roll. But I, I would say this, as I'm kind of answering my own question. <laughs> What I do sometimes, because the mind is a mysterious thing, is Allen Robinson must have had a terrible week. Mm -hmm. Because you go there for the money, you got the bag, you got the 30 million, but wide receivers are divas. Wide receivers pick up the paper the next day, they watch the shows the next day, where do I rank, mm -hmm. right? How many catches did Tyreek have? How many catches did this guy have? 
you had one catch for 12 yards. He had a bad week. He had a bad week. It was not good. And uh, even down to, like, my fantasy points. I know why receivers look at that, too. Like, oh, yeah, this is where I ended up. So, it's <clears throat> having to deal with that all week long, I think it will motivate him for this week. It's just now that you've put the target on his back to say that we're going to throw him the ball more, defense coordinators looking at him like, well, maybe we'll just guard him closer. And right. Like, I will say this. That's one of the benefits to playing center. Nobody comes up to you at a local New Jersey restaurant and goes, yo, my man. I need you this week in and, fantasy. Uh, I need 15 <laughs> right? points out of you. Like, That's what I need. They don't have nothing less than 15 because points. Because I'm sure that Allen Robinson, who's a prideful guy, either stayed home all week, but if he didn't, he'd be shopping. Oh, I'll get some grapefruits. I got some energy drink. Somebody went up to him and said, yo, what happened? I started you in fantasy. <laughs> yeah. You cost me a week one W, right? Not oh, LA. Completely. Yeah. Not Centers LA, don't didn't. get that. Centers don't deal with that. No. Um, no. Was but fantasy a big thing in the Jet Locker room when you played? It was starting to come around by the end of my career. Um, a couple guys were playing it. I Coming had, around where guys played it or guys had people in their ear and they were aware of, hey, wait a minute, I'm going to get killed on Monday because I had a bad game. Both. So it was, <laughs> kind of, it was kind of the awareness side, like, hey, listen, someone's going to yell at me because I know I didn't get the points they needed. And then also guys being like, oh, I started him on fantasy. And I was like, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I'm just trying to play right. people. One of the other games we're going to get into is, uh, I guess it's a rivalry. I just don't think of it as a rivalry. And it's Tampa and New Orleans. And uh, the Saints, excuse me, Tampa's offensive tackle, Tristan Wirfs, uh, commented on this alleged rivalry and what Coach Bowles had to say to them about it. Yeah, in a, in a weird way, the New Orleans Saints are to the Tom Brady Tampa Bay Buccaneers what the Miami Dolphins were to the Tam Brady, Tom Brady New England Patriots. Mm -hmm. Since Brady's been in Tampa for the two years he's there, he hadn't beaten them. He hadn't beaten them. You know, he's, uh, he's 0 4 against New Orleans. Now, listen, I, I can't believe that that, that stat even exists, mm -hmm. but it does. But Todd Bowles is right. It's not a rivalry until we win one. Those are rivalries because A, there's a history to it, mm -hmm. and B, both teams at some point have enjoyed success against the other team. If you blow a team out every time you play them, you don't view that as a rivalry. No, you don't. And I think that's – it's more, I think, coming from Todd Bowles is more of a motivational thing yes. for the players. Where Because I think the fans do have that rivalry. Being close proximity, you know, the Saints and Tampa Bay right there. You know, I think there is the fan rivalry. But on the field, it really hasn't been that much. And that's the motivation. Like, hey, listen, if you want to be involved in this and you want these fans to really be passionate about this rivalry, we might need to go out and win one. And don't forget, you know, New Orleans coming back last week and beating Atlanta. So now they're 1-0. The fan base is going to be into it. Mm -hmm. The fan base wants to see you and Tom Brady. Like, you're, they're going to put up on the board the Drago line. If he dies, <laughs> he dies. That's all it's going to be. But there's also Jameis Winston, who used to be the Tampa Bay QB. I mean, there's that extra story as well. I mean, there's a lot in this game. Yes. Well, Jameis Winston's always a lot. <laughs> I'm not even sure if he remembers playing in Tampa. He's still trying to figure out how his elbows are the same <laughs> as his <laughs> knees. But listen, the greatest rivalry or the most famous rivalry of all time is the Hatfields versus McCoys. Right. If the Hatfields won all the time, would they care about the McCoys? They wouldn't, right? Tom Brady, before we get out of here for the segment, also commented on the fact that he's had no success since he got to Tampa against the Saints. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.